Hi everyone, Ian here. So I recently purchased the Framework laptop with a view to using Ubuntu 22.04 LTS as a regular daily desktop. You can see my experience in setting it up in my last video which honestly surprised me at how smoothly it all went. What follows in this video is everything I experienced with using Ubuntu daily after that. The things I liked and all the problems I found with using Linux as a part of my setup alongside my existing Mac Mini. This isn't a review of the framework, but I will touch on some related points. Hopefully this serves as a useful guide if you're considering switching to Linux and you happen to be a developer. I should say that before I start that this isn't my first time using Linux. I started out as a PC user. I've used Ubuntu as my daily desktop for many years whilst doing my PhD and Ubuntu is the bread and butter of every new web server I build. So I have a lot of experience with both Mac OS and Linux. But after a decade of web development on Macs, could Linux coexist with it as a viable daily desktop alternative? Okay, let's start off with a po on a positive note on what I liked. Firstly, there's the price. It's free. Ubuntu is freely available to install on any machine. This is in stark contrast to Windows where you pay over $100 for a retail version of Home or $200 for the Pro version. The only way to get a machine Mac OS is to purchase some of Apple's incredibly expensive hardware. Secondly, there's the availability of my dev tools. I was able to get my dev environment set up really swiftly with all the tools and libraries that I needed. These were available through Ubuntu's built-in Advanced Package Manager, which is apps on the command line. Something that Mac OS doesn't have. I know there's Brew, but that's not really part of Mac OS itself. I'm a Python and JavaScript developer, so setting up my environment includes PyEnv, Poetry, PipEnv, Docker, MVM and Node, and all of them were able to be installed and used without too much of an issue. And where there wasn't an apt version, there was a manual download. VS Code and Chrome were also able to be installed quickly with the extensions I needed for Vue and TypeScript. I'm also able to download and use PlexAmp for getting a music fix whilst coding. This meant I could easily pull down all my projects and work in an environment closely resembling what I was already used to on my Mac with all my creature comforts. I was even able to use my own M1 blog tutorial on setting it up, as most of the tooling was no different than what I'd installed there. So thanks, pass me. I generally like to use an external keyboard and mouse setup when using a laptop, so it's good to see that each of my Bluetooth devices, my headphones, Logitech MS keys and master were all detected and usable. I have experienced a couple of random dropouts on the Bose headphones in the first week of using it, but it's nothing too annoying. I also really like the gestures that I get when I'm using Ubuntu when using a trackpad allowing me to quickly navigate between desktop and workspaces that I'm using or pull up recently used applications. They seem extremely slick. It's funny, I think accidentally finding these with a three finger gesture finally makes me understand why some Mac users love to use a trackpad over a mouse. So let's get into the things I disliked. One thing that jumped out at me straight away was how short the battery life was after closing the lid and returning to my laptop the next day. It turns out that Linux doesn't have particularly stellar battery management out of the box, meaning that once in standby the laptop's battery will deplete at a rate of around 5% an hour when in suspend mode. So basically the battery's completely gone overnight, and that's not a great intro to anyone adopting a new OS. Call me naive, but I've never cared too much about different battery states on laptops, having been spoiled by how well the battery is managed on my MacBook. You shut it, you come back to it, and you don't need to worry if there will be battery in the morning. It's possible to set up hibernation for Ubuntu, but it's pretty complicated and it's not something I recommend for most users. If you do set it up, however, you can enjoy a 5% drop every 24 hours once the machine enters a hibernation state. So this is much better and well worth looking into if you want to be portable using Linux. Whilst my main peripherals were all recognised, I can't use some others. My Shure MV7 microphone, for example, isn't recognised by default and in Linux is unsupported by Shure themselves. I tried switching to Pipewire audio versus Pulse audio, but this resulted in incredibly choppy audio from the microphone that was completely unusable. Framework laptop with Ubuntu I knew this was the case before switching, but it's annoying that I can't use this microphone that's super expensive nonetheless. Ubuntu 2204 has a handy desktop recording feature, similar to what I'm used to on the Mac, so I was hopeful I could record programming tutorials using it. Unfortunately, it's video only, recorded as a WebM file. 
You'll therefore need to record using multiple devices, so your audio and your video separately, and sync your audio in editing software. Depending on what editing software you use, you may need to convert the WebM file too, something that I don't have to do on my Mac. I've tried to use a couple of other tools which did allow audio recording, but I ended up giving up due to the mic issues that I mentioned earlier. Whilst Ubuntu has apps for the command line, it also has Snap as an application store. This is contrary to many other distributions that use the Flatpak package delivery subsystem, and Ubuntu is something of an outlier here. I'm not going to get into which one is best, but I've ended up installing both over the course of testing, which confusingly gives me two options for install of manually downloaded applications, and they appear exactly the same on right click. The fingerprint recognition when logging in hasn't been that great. It works about 30% of the time for me, which means I'm constantly stabbing at the button trying to get my laptop to recognise me. I can't tell this is the framework laptop or Ubuntu, but whichever it is, it's extremely annoying when you just want to start up and get moving at the beginning of the day. I often default to logging in with the keyboard as Chrome was not getting unlocked every time, asking me to log into that as well when I opened it. Working in the terminal and generally within VS Code has been pretty jarring at first due to the different shortcuts in VS Code and the keys themselves in different positions on the keyboard. I also found that copying and pasting stuff was often a pain because it seemingly behaves differently under different applications. In VS Code I had to also map the copy down and up commands to completely different keys because Ubuntu wasn't allowing VS Code to pick up the defaults. These are the sorts of things that I don't think I've ever had to worry about on my Mac and I don't really want to have to worry about them whilst in the flow of coding. There are initial teething problems, but I still find myself typing an at instead of a double quote. My number one complaint, however, the one that annoys me more than any other, is the way that scrolling is set up in Ubuntu by default. I know it sounds petty, but we scroll a lot through documentation as developers and looking at answers on the internet, and it takes up a big proportion of the day. The way the touchpad is set up in Ubuntu feels strange. The default browser, Firefox, uses the snap image, but doesn't have inertia or motion scrolling set up. And what that means is that scrolling will stop as soon as you stop moving your fingers, rather than slowing to a gradual stop like on a MacBook. It turns out that each Ubuntu application has to manage scrolling like this itself. You can download Firefox and install it manually where it is enabled as part of the application only to find it being incredibly fast with no way of altering it except for adjusting the scrolling speed for the entire OS. So you can either have no scrolling or a crazy amount of it. As I use my MX Master mouse when working for the day I can sort of get around this due to its brilliant frictionless wheel design but it instantly is a problem when using only the laptop itself. This is a basic feature, so it's often so often used that it's really frustrating to me that it couldn't be adjusted simply. So as you may have guessed, my Ubuntu experience hasn't been amazing so far. I knew there would be problems, but some of them in particular, the battery management and trackpad issues under Linux have been a big cause of concern, and I've spent a frustrating amount of hours trying to solve them. If you're happy to spend your time debugging these things, then that's great and you may find solutions, but for the majority of us, I'd like to think that our time is a bit more valuable than that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments which is your OS of choice, and like and subscribe for more of this sort of stuff. I'd also love to know if you've got any tips for the problems that I've experienced, uh, so be sure to comment them down below. Also, be sure to check out my unboxing videos on the framework, and stay tuned for a future review of it. Alright, I'll speak to you soon in another video. Bye for now. Hi everyone, in that's not a good start either. Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is the bread and butter of every new web server that I develop. So I was hopeful I could record programming tutorials using it. That was a weird way of saying that. The fring fringer? We can do a demo now. Is it gonna work? Just wait that time.